How are we doing, everybody? Welcome to Blood and Donuts. I'm Tony. And I'm Chris. Thanks for joining, everybody. Yeah, thanks for joining us. If you are new here and you've never listened to us before, we welcome you first off. Chris and I, we've been friends 25 years. Feels like it, yeah. <laughs> Over 25 years. Back in middle school, we used to rent movies, horror movies, B movies. We would take them home, spend the night, stay up till 3 o'clock in the morning. And then at school the next day, we could talk about these movies and we could uh, quote quote them all week. So now we're kind of doing the, the adult version of that. We're watching horror movies and we're talking about it. We haven't even talked about any of these beforehand. And then we get on right. live, we push the record button, and y'all get to listen to us talk about these movies. What movie Sounds are we fun. I know it does sound fun. It is fun. <laughs> what movie do we have today, Chris? So today we're going to review the, uh, you know, I guess a video game adaptation movie. Uh, it was a game at first, and now it's a movie, Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's, the movie, the long-awaited movie. <laughs> right. And uh, It looks cool in the trailer, you know. The trailer looks really good. Last night, uh, me and my kids, we watched it on Peacock. Mm -hmm. and yeah, we watched it too, and... Um, I think you know, Aiden lasted a good quarter of the movie, and then he bailed. Oh, he didn't like it? He was done. Oh, really? I don't know if it was the jump scares or if he just got bored or a combination, but yeah, we were all sitting there watching it, and then, yeah, quarter well, uh, through, he's like, eh. So we, we had a different experience. Uh, Caleb and, and Bennett, uh, Bennett not as much, but Caleb back in, I'd say, 26, 2017, they really got into these the, the Five Nights at Freddy games. And uh, being a good parent, you have to get into them with them. So, um, we, so we, we downloaded these, and we kind of got into the lore a little bit. If you're a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, don't get mad at us. We don't know our, every little tidbit of lore and all that good stuff. We're not even going to come close or scratch the surface with that. But I have seen the, the game theory, uh, the, uh, the game theory uh, videos, a few of those videos on YouTube. I've played the games with my kids and I grew up in the 1980s. We had Showbiz Pizza. Did you have Showbiz Pizza? Yes, Showbiz Pizza down in uh down by Hickory Hollow Mall. Yeah, it was it was eventually bought out by Chuck e. Yeah, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and uh with like we had it was, at the Showbiz Pizza it was called the Rock of Fire Explosion and it was Billy Bob and it was like four stages of animatronics and when you were a kid there was nothing better than Showbiz Pizza. It had a ball pit. It was Five Nights at Freddy's basically. Yeah, it was a deep ball pit too. It, was oh like, it felt like five foot deep. It did when you're a kid. So <laughs> when when this when these games came out and my son was like, "I want Five Nights at Freddy's," and I looked it up, I said, "This is such a creepy concept. I can't imagine yeah. a scarier thing than to be locked into a showbiz pizza mm -hmm. late at night, and then yeah. you then you read about the story behind it that Scott Cawthon came out with." Mm -hmm. And he did such a good job with the lore of this, and yes. uh, he built such a good story with this. And uh, and I just I, I really I really enjoyed the games. Uh, okay, I, I say I enjoyed the games. The enjoy if you never played the games, you you pick up an iPad, and you're you're basically the security guard. I, the first one for sure. And you're standing, uh, you're sitting. It's your you got to last five nights being a security guard at Freddie Fosbear's Pizza at night, and you're watching. Mm -hmm the security footage and you're seeing these animatronics slowly come alive and it's all about jump scares and scaring the the crap out of you so if uh, you don't want that then you're not gonna have fun and eventually I'm like here take the iPad I don't want to watch any more of these because <laughs> you're sitting right. you're sitting there with so so anxious yeah and that's part of it too like because I, I bought the first two games I think and then I played the first one and like halfway through, I'm like, okay, like it's fun. It's more fun to watch people play this game <laughs> yes. than it is to actually play it. Yes. But like, uh, like the beginning, you have the phone call with the guy. He's like, Hey, listen for you to help you get settled in on your first night. Uh, and thank you for taking the job and all that stuff. Yeah. Again, it's been years since I listened to it, but, uh, I feel like the movie captured, some of this without spoiling it we will tell them about what we're going to do with the spoilers as far as that goes right so we're just kind of going to talk about what we feel are you know pros and cons without spoiling it we're going to give a rating um one out of 13 donuts 
uh, and then we're going to go into kind of the plot, plot synopsis and uh, summary and kind of talk about it scene by scene. But we'll like, we'll like, warn like. you. We'll warn you before we do that, before we start spoiling oh, yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, we will. And uh, yeah, so th- so these the, the video game, uh, w- what a cool concept. And it was a phenomenon. We had the toys. We had we, we have the VR game. What were we oh. thinking? What were we thinking with no, the V? Thanks. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Bennett, Bennett was like, I, I might have played it 20 minutes because it is, it's freaky. I mean, you can imagine. Yeah. yeah, when you look around and all you can see is the security office and there's no way out. You can't like look off screen if you're in VR. No, no thank you. No, you can't. So, uh, <laughs> so again, when you hear that uh, there was a PG-13, which that might make some people mad. Yeah, um, I mean... I th- they probably did that because it's, it, you know, you have the animatronics. You have, it's more for teenagers, really. I, I mean, there was a little bit of blood in it, but most of the stuff was kind of done off screen. Um, so, I felt like that was probably needed so they could capture that younger audience because a lot of pe- younger people would want to watch it. Yeah, I think, and, and I and I agree. I think it was. I think it was a good choice. I'm going to go against the grain. I'm going to say PG-13 was a good choice because, I mean, we, we've watched Terrifier, bloody, gory mess that it is, and, and right. it's a good movie, but I can't watch that with my kids. Right. You know, so I got my, my two older boys who are in middle school and high school, and we can sit there and we can watch Five Nights at Freddy's, and we can enjoy it. And actually, my wife, she came along, and she, I think she enjoyed nice. it as well. Yeah, it wouldn't, yeah. That's good. Now, um, enjoying it. And it being a good movie are two different things, I think. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, because I, 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 I promise, I really did enjoy this, and I enjoyed, uh, you know, talking about it with, uh, with Caleb and Bennett, and uh, and watching it and seeing how close it is to the video game. Yeah, yeah, I was looking for comparisons everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and because so- he made like seven. Uh, I think it's up to seven video games now, and each one had a different concept. Um, there's a YouTuber called Windigoon. He does a very good summary of everything. Yeah, I watched that like a few months ago, just so I could fully understand. Yeah, and that, I bet you uh, still don't uh, fully understand. You probably still yeah. don't fully understand, do you? Oh no, no, it, it's a, you know, you got the red yarn all over the board trying yeah. to figure it out. No, it, it's it is complicated, but it's crazy that. You start with a security guard in an office, jump scares, and he had built this world around just that. And that's really good. I think that uh, Scott Cawthon did that. It's really amazing. Yeah, it's impressive what he did. Um, there's books that go along with this that feed into the lore. So <laughs> wow. I, I, so a lot of the, the thick lore that you're hearing on the internet and, and maybe you've read the books yourself, that a lot, of, I mean, it goes deep. It goes deep. So well, again, today we're going to miss some stuff. We just watched the movie last night, so we, we have some notes here. We might miss some stuff, so don't don't get mad at us. But and uh, we're definitely going to miss some lore. And uh, and just to, uh, before we make any Five Nights at Freddy fans mad, just know that we respect the game a lot. We respect this movie, and <laughs> and uh, and uh, sorry that we get anything wrong here. Uh, so uh, I'm going to rate it. Um, I have this movie down. First off, let me give let me give my positives. I'm gonna try to do this without spoiling it. I enjoyed yeah. this movie. It was enjoyable. It was close to the video game. One of the, the the things that you have, the things that you run into, is when you're adapting a video game to a movie. Is the plot is wild a lot of times, and it doesn't necessarily add up. Now, you uh, the Super Mario video game movie, right? We we love that freaking that was, that was awesome. Loved it. That was Crazy. awesome. They did a great job. And that's why you look at Rotten Tomatoes and it's got like a 90% positive score. And then you look at the critics and it's like 50 something. You know what I mean? Like it's hard right. to adapt a video game because the yeah. concepts are so wild and they're not necessarily, um, they, ne- they don't necessarily flow like a, like a, like a, what a, what a movie critic might think is a, is a, is a great movie. Right. And so when, when I give my rating, I want you to take that and, you know, take that into consideration. Uh, my mom, if, if she knew nothing about the video games and she listened when she sat down and she watched this, this movie, she might think it's the most ridiculous movie she's ever seen. I don't get it. That's true. You know what I mean? So like, and again, so, um, 
I, so you're, I'm sitting there. I was watching. I was trying to think. I was like, if you don't have any respect for the video games, are you going to like this? It's it was it, it jumps a little bit all over the place. Uh, the the story we'll, we'll get into a little bit more, but um, I, I think they they could have. There's definitely some issues with it, but but overall, I had an enjoyable experience. My rating is a seven out of okay. thirteen. So uh, seven. yeah, just because oh. yeah, I mean I. I I know it's getting crapped on all over the internet, but I I really enjoyed watching it with the boys and 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 with Lauren. So seven, nice. Um, and a little background on our rating system. So like a one through four or five, you you know, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying it. Watch it for free if you have time. You know, your five through nine range, you could go out and rent it, and you're gonna have fun. Um, and it it would be worth it to kind of spend a little money on it. Uh, 10 through 13 is kind of like a masterpiece, a top tier level movies um, that you should own and watch repeatedly. Um, so before I give my ranking, then I'll go into my pros and cons. Um, I like the, the, and again, I'll save a few of these for the synopsis, but um, I like the use of the silhouettes of the animatronics throughout the movie. Um, there was... Uh, a few scenes where all the animatronics are in it and they're all kind of doing teamwork stuff. I thought that was really cool. Um, and I'll just say bloody eyes was a pro, um, a con, the family dynamic was a little confusing and hard to follow. Um, about halfway through the movie, I didn't know if, uh, Abby, I think her name, uh, I didn't know if she was this guy's daughter or sister halfway through the movie. And then they finally told me, um, it was a slow start and, um, I can suspend my disbelief enough, but, uh, for animatronics, but when a taxi drives off with a little girl without any parental supervision or him confirming anything is just kind of stupid. Yeah. Um, the worst scene was the ant at the diner. My favorite scene, I'll just say robos kill robbers. And that's all I'll leave it at that. Uh, I'm going to give this a five out of 13 donuts. Um, I really went in with an open mind and was wanting to experience it. I was not comparing to the video game at all until the end. And I was kind of draw some more comparisons, but you know, if you just watch this without knowing of the game at all, like you said, you're not going to know what's happening at all. It would just be like scary Chuck E. Cheese. And that's what, you know, that's what he was going for when he wrote this universe. But it was too confusing at too many times for me, kind of slow, uh, and not enough animatronics throughout the movie. Yeah, I loved the uh, the scene where they're all working together. Loved the the robbery scene that we'll get into, but those were my uh, favorite parts, and I feel like there just wasn't enough of that. Yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what you said. Um, well, one thing they got right, I feel, with the animatronics is they did use Jim Henson's Creature Shop as opposed to using CGI. Oh, okay. Awesome. So, so it was real. It was real deal animatronics and uh, and puppets. And I guess they, nice. I feel, like, I feel like they really could have. I feel like the fans would have went after them if they did not use real right. animatronics there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's, a twenty twenty three horror film based on the hit video game. We just said that it's directed by Emma Tammy. She directed The Wind. She also directed Into the Dark. Um, the series creator, Scott Cawthon, uh, and Seth Cuddeback is produced by Cawthon and noted horror producer Jason Blum, Blum Studios, who just did The Exorcist, which we just did. So he's got two movies in the theater right now. Josh Hutcherson, which my wife was like, he's in Hunger Games. And I was like, <laughs> it's oh. It's well, well, off from yeah. the Hunger Games. <laughs> And then we have Matthew. I, from. I like that. And then we have Matthew Liller, who was uh, also Shaggy from Scooby Doo. I know him more from the Thirteen Ghosts. Yeah, he is in Thirteen which Ghosts. I know, yeah, which I know is one of your favorite movies. It was it was okay. You, but, it was okay. Uh, Thirteen Ghosts was you hated it. that movie. No, I, it, it was. You, you talked it up. You talked it up because you, you loved made it. Fun of me for liking it. I didn't mean it. Was, I was young. <laughs> I'd have to we'll go back. And, I'd have to go back and give it a re, uh, go back and look at it and give it a review. Maybe we we do that on this podcast. <laughs> but Thirteen Ghosts, uh, it was it, that was redone. That was an old black and white movie, I think. I think you're right. Done yeah. back in the day. I was real anyway. So we got Mary Stewart Masterson, and then there's some other actors: uh, Piper Rubio, Cat Connor Sterling, 
uh, Elizabeth Lale, and of course, like I said, Jim Henson's Creature Shop worked on the animatronic characters. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, this is just a description before we go into spoilers. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike Schmidt, who Hutcherson's, he's a young man with few prospects, troubled by events in his past, having to care for his younger sister, Abby. He's uh, left him struggling to pay the bills. As Providence would have it, opportunity comes knocking when he receives a job to act as security guard for the local dilapidated Freddy Fosbear's Pizza. And that's where the magic happens, right? Oh, yeah. And yeah. it's a cool setting, too. I thought the scenery in the building itself was really good. I mean, I like it looks spooky. You flip a switch and everything turns on and you hear all the arcades and stuff yeah. starting up. It's It was a cool uh, setting, I guess. I, I have some notes here, too. When... Uh, when it opens, when, when the uh, when the the credits roll at the beginning, um, I, I I I guess we'll get that's a spoiler. I guess I don't know how much how much you're allowed to spoil. Uh, are let's you ready to spoil this that. thing? Let's go ahead. Let's get into it. Yeah. All right. So uh, so the the movie opens up again. The synopsis. But there's not a lot on the internet right now. This movie just came out last night. But uh, when when the when the movie opens. There's a, a pixelated video arcade game of Five Nights at Freddy characters. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool watching all that. And I was looking for clues to, you yeah. know, I'm, I was probably already drawing comparisons to the yeah. video games at that yeah. point. I went ahead and so it opens up and there's this security guard who who's obviously working at Freddy Fosbear's Pizza. And uh, he's trying he's trying to get out of the office. He's done with his job. He's he's uh, his shift is over. I think he's just trying to leave for the day. Well, I, th- I think he, w- he was frantic, right? He oh, was he frantic was. and strapped to a chair. <laughs> and strapped then, to a chair with blades coming out. Oh, and then, yeah. yeah, and that's how, that's how it opens up. You're like, oh, okay. So it, it's like, don't take this security guard job uh, later right. in the movie. There's there's happy drawings of kids on the wall with mm-hmm. the animatronics. That that's in the forefront uh, at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, there's probably hundreds of them on this wall, and they're like holding hands with Freddy or or with the bunny rabbit, as it says in there, mm-hmm. which uh, we will finally, well, we'll later know uh, it's Springtrap. Yeah, is his name the bad guy on this? Um, unable to afford a sitter, Mike has no choice but to take his sister along for his shift. However. What at first seems like an easy kickback job turns into a nightmare when the pizzeria's four iconic animatronic mascots, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, come to life at night, and they start to hunt them down. Now with the help of a police officer named Vanessa, Mike must struggle to save not only himself, but also his sister from the pizzeria's dark past and the monsters that it has created. Right, right. and it, that sounded like a whole summary, but... <laughs> that was the... Uh, uh, you know, and they don't show it, but I mean, they do a good job of setting up Mike's character. He's looking for a job. He's poor. You know, he's walking to his little kid in his house with a hole in his sock and his toes sticking out. I mean, I saw all that. Yeah. He's taking some kind of medication. Um, so, and and then this is before he takes the job at Freddy's. He's a security cop. Yeah, and he just sees a kid, you know, kind of getting moved along by his dad. He just goes and beats the crap out of him. Yeah, he he's a mall. You're thinking co- like, what are you doing, man? Yeah, so so he uh, Mike uh, has some PTSD, mm-hmm. and and that's apparent right there in the beginning because he's he, like you said, he's in line to get some ice cream or something like that, and they're like, "Hey, Mike, how are you doing?" And he looks back and he sees this kid by him by himself, and then yeah. he sees this this man who's like, "Come on!" and like takes his his hand. He runs over there and just starts wailing on him. <laughs> in which I was uh, thinking that's probably his dad, buddy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We were thinking the same thing. We were all laughing, and we're like, "Man, right. I, I was like, Mike, let's get some more information, Mike. <laughs> Maybe question him first. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, we got a big kick out of that. Um, yeah, he 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 sent to a career counselor, Steve Raglan, who offers him work as a night uh, security guard at an abandoned family diner known as Freddie Fosbear's Pizza. Though initially reluctant, Mike accepts the offer after social services threaten to take the custody of his younger sister, Abby, and pass her over to his estranged Aunt Jane, who smells like cigarettes, by the way, Mm -hmm. due to concerns of Mike's emotional stress. 
you know, I didn't know at the time, and I still didn't know at the end of the movie, but it was almost like this Aunt Judy, is that her name? Yeah, Aunt Jane. She wants this little girl to live with her, but for like she's really strong about it, and she's like this devious character who just wants the little girl, but they don't explain why. Like, what is her goal of just having this kid in her life now he does kind of like he does like say real quick to vanessa at one point he goes or no no he says it to the counselor he says she just wants her so she gets the check every month so there's a check so apparently the abby is special needs and then she gets a month she gets a monthly check because of her because of her special needs but 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 i was thinking the same thing i was like she was paying that babysitter and stuff, a uh, uh, two thousand or a thousand dollars. Well, later, right. you know, she, I was just like, man, I was like, how much is that check? Right. You know. Right, and so and that character too, Max. That was no relation to this family. It was just a random babysitter. Is yeah. that what you gathered? Oh, so so yeah. Well, the aunt hired her to oh, to, okay, to, okay. to to get dirt on on Mike. Gotcha. So that's what was confusing because she was really nice with Mike and it looked like their relationship was, I, I wouldn't say more than friends, but yeah. they, they were, looked like they were established and trusting for a long time. And yeah, all and of a sudden you see her sitting with Aunt Jane. It's like, really? Yeah. There, there, there was some pieces missing there. It seemed, you know, cause it did, you know, she's watching. She's like, I wish somebody would buy me a ring. And maybe it was like kind of alluding that maybe, maybe Mike, you yeah, know, maybe my, my, Mike is a love interest or something like that. But ultimately, right. it's it's shown that she's hired by Aunt Jane. Gotcha. To uh to to kick up dirt on uh on Mike so Aunt Jane can get full custody. On the first night, Mike falls asleep and has a dream where he witnesses the kidnapping and presumed murder of his brother Garrett, whom was taken away by an unknown man. Mike is then met by five unknown children who allegedly witnessed the kidnapping and promptly run away on the second night. Mike meets well on the, so so let's go with that first night. First off Um, in the video game, uh, you you start as a security guard and, and and your nights get progressively worse. Mm -hmm. So after this first night he does, he he falls asleep. He has a dream. Nothing happens. He goes home. And then uh, my kids, which, which who, who have played the game a lot more than me, they said the first night is always the easiest. You know? And I was just like, oh, that's cool. That, I, right. I, I like that they followed that. Yeah, you could get through the first night in the game without any jump scares with just a few clicks or a few taps. Yeah. yeah you're good to go. Yeah, so I thought that was cool. That was cool. I like that they followed that. Mm-hmm. On the second night, uh, Mike meets police officer Vanessa Shelley who shows him around the restaurant and tells him that the place closed back in the 1980s after five children were murdered there. The bodies were never found. Mike's dream is repeated, though after Mike attempts to confront one of the children, he is attacked, and he wakes up to find himself wounded physically, though his wounds are uh, treated by Vanessa. Right, and that's the second night, so he's already getting slashed by uh, Foxy on the second night while he's asleep. Yeah, so uh, so, uh, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Uh, why Foxy didn't just finish the job there while he's asleep? I don't I don't know, I guess. Yeah, I don't know how they pick how they pick uh, right. who they like and who they don't like. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. How, I don't know how that goes. I know, like you said, the robbers will break in later and they make easy work of them. But so maybe they maybe they are smart and they don't just kill yeah. randomly. But uh, Mike has these lucid dreams. But in right. these dreams, he's able to talk to these children. These children, we later find out, or if you've played the video games or know any of the lore, you know that each child is connected to an animatronic. Right. And that's, yeah, I picked up on that pretty quickly, and I think the rest of the family did too. How did you feel about the number of recurring dream scenes? It was... um it was a bit much, but but I was uh, again. It, it was a lot, but I, I didn't know how else they could talk to him. You know, right. I, I like because because when at one point the kid is running through the restaurant. Do you remember that? And he goes, mm-hmm. "Come come over here." You know, which was a little creepy, but at the same time, I was like, well, "Like so he can show himself." You know, right, right. Yeah, I thought that was okay, and I agree. I didn't like the number of times we had to go back and revisit that. But 
I do agree that it was kind of the only way to communicate. I yeah. thought it could have been done in one big dream. Yeah. Instead of just, you, you kind of hit it like five or six times in the first 40 minutes and you're thinking, okay, yeah. here we go again. Yeah. A lot, a lot of this movie is in, I mean, and we get a lot of, ex, you know, a lot of the story is dumped into that dreamlike mm-hmm. state with Garrett and all that. And that's, that's how they get you, get you along in the story. On the third night, Jane hires a group of delinquents to vandalize the restaurant in order to get Mike fired, an act in which would enable her to gain custody of Abby. As the break-in occurs, the restaurant animatronics, uh, Freddie Fosbear, Chica, Foxy, and Bonnie, come alive and murder the delinquents. One of the uh, vandals happens to be Abby's babysitter, Max, which requires Mike to bring Abby uh, uh, to his next shift. Let's just talk about uh, that night. Uh, that's my favorite part of the movie. Um, you get to see all the animatronics in action. I think all of them. Yeah, except for Bunny or uh, Snap Trap um, or Spring Trap. I'm sorry. Um, right. So, yeah, I loved that scene. I loved, uh, you know, Chica walking in the background um, while uh, Bonnie is you know, stalking this other person. That's It was all pretty cool ended up in the security office he's about to smash the cameras and then he starts to see his other uh, assailant you know, or his other criminal guy running through the hallway. He's like, what's he doing? Um, I thought it was really well done where they all kind of team up and the little cupcake, I forgot about the little cupcake. Yeah. I don't know what that one's called, but um, the use of that was pretty cool too. Yeah. The, the cupcake is vicious. It'll eat your face off. It, right. could, it can like fly in the air and just eat your face. It's probably like the most vicious of all the animatronics, it seems. Um, Which one was your favorite? Favorite animatronic in this movie? In this movie? I'd say uh, Foxy seems like to do the the most damage, but I'd say Chica. Mm -hmm. Chica, the creepiest. In the games, you know, Foxy's like the quickest. You see him not in his location. You have to, you know, switch cameras and shut your door real quick or he'll come in and get you. Right. So um, I liked Foxy the best in the game. I thought... um, yeah, I thought Bonnie was creepy. Yeah, here. Yeah, so I like Bonnie. And I um so so when the vandals are are moving throughout the building, um, it doesn't just follow them around. It also shows the security footage, which I thought was great because yeah. it, it it was just like the game. You could see the footage; the, all the animatronics are there, and then it would show the footage, and one of them would be gone, just like the game. Right, and it would show, or it show Bonnie pass down a hallway, which was just like the game. I think mm-hmm. they captured the essence of the game and the creepiness of the game perfectly there. And uh, and when and when the vandals showed up, we all went, "Oh God, they're dead!" You know, and even like even my kids, they were like, "They're dead. What are they doing?" Right. You know, you knew you knew it was bad. And and I agree, this is the best scene in the entire film when the you get to see the animatronics do what they do. Right. And to the people who, you know, they deserve it at this point in the story. They're oh, like yeah. just a bunch of delinquent vandals and yeah. hired to just trash a place. Yeah. So they get killed. That's what happens, people, when you try to vandalize a place. It happens. Something's going to come out and kill you. And um, the, the babysitter, she comes in last, and you can see her <laughs> walking down the Freddy Fosbear pizza dark hallways. And this kid says, come on, come on. And then like runs behind a door. So she like creepily, slowly, hello. And then she opens a door and there is Freddy Fosbear's animatronic standing there. And she, because she's a genius, gets a chair, (laughs) stands on the chair and leans towards the mouth of Freddy Fosbear closer and closer and closer until a kid's hand reaches out of Freddie Fosbear's mouth, grabs her, and then you see the shadow on the wall of Freddie biting her in half, right? Or just her head? I I don't know, but it was just I like a, her whole body. Yeah, yeah, she was like straight up in the air, and then pff, it just fell off. And then we're just like, oh, oh you know. So that yeah, was that was a yeah, that was uh, that was a pretty cool scene. I really like that one. Yeah. They killed the the teenage babysitter. I thought that was really cool. She deserved it. She did. So Mike is uh, Mike is a genius too. He's bringing Abby to work with him. 
Well, and it, you're led to believe that that's the only choice he has because he's poor. He can't hire. You know, he has to use friends as ba- as babysitters, and sounds right. like he's all out of them. Let's talk about Abby a little bit, though. So Abby, we we meet her, and uh, she's she's special needs, uh, okay. supposedly. And I didn't but gather that no. I didn't... So and and the aunt says so. I guess a girl who just sits around talking to uh to made up friends and drawing all day is perfectly fine to the counselor. So, um, I guess that's her special need. Uh, yes. And uh, I thought the little girl actress was good though. Yeah. Piper Rubio. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought she did a great job. Um, but I, I couldn't tell that she was special needs. Um, and then the focal point of all her drawings was her big brother. Yeah. I like that. So that was cool. But it seemed like her and Mike had, they didn't have the best relationship. Right. It seemed well, that talk to her. it seemed that way. He'd be like, "All right, let's go for dinner." She go, "No, I'm not hungry." No. Right. And at one point, he sits on her bed, and she's like, "You're sitting on one of my friends." Right. You know, and there's nothing there. Yeah, there's nothing there. And uh, but later, we find out that she kind of has a sixth sense, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you gather that, um, and I guess she can. She relates to when she's in the pizzeria. She really makes the animatronics come to life because they like her. She's yeah. a kid. Well, it's a, and, and like, uh, her friends, her, her made up friends who are actually ghosts, you know, I, I, she, she knew them before she went to the pizzeria. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause she had drawings of the, uh, animatronics, I think before yeah. she even went there or something. Yeah. Like that. It doesn't go into big detail about it. It just, you know, right. it just kind of assumes it, you, you assume that she has a, a sixth sense, about ghosts and then when she goes to freddie fosbear's pizza she's able to hang out with them she really uh loves the animatronics and hanging out with them which is a, a very sobering weird moment because on one scene you see these animatronics absolutely obliterate and murder human beings and bite them in half and then you see abby just hanging out with them and getting a hug yeah. from and you're sitting there like you're, you're like stop don't don't touch them <laughs> The animatronics befriend her, though Vanessa and Mike are hesitant with the latter discovering that the animatronics are possessed by the ghost of dead children, and they were led by a boy with blonde hair and allegedly talk about a yellow rabbit consistently. Right, and have they built the fort yet? Because that was the, <laughs> that's the other scene you were talking about. I like that one. Yeah, so so yeah, uh, when, when I, I guess they did. I guess it kind of skips around here. Um, yeah. Abby hangs out with the animatronics, and like you said, they they build a fort. Vanessa kind of does a one eighty, right? She's That's, like, yeah, she's like in a stock room looking for blankets. She's like, I don't know, we're gonna build a fort, and they're all laying there on the floor. And then she goes at one point, "If you bring Abby back here again, I will shoot you." Right. And I was like, "That's that was my biggest." Well, other than the weird family dynamic, yeah, the uh, Vanessa, the cop was just such a frustrating character yeah. she was so aloof yeah you didn't know what she was doing yeah she's throwing his pills in the river uh she's really compassionate in one scene then yeah i'll shoot you in the next scene but that was, it's weird i guess if your dad is a psychopathic murderer who murders kids and you grow up knowing that he put the bodies of the children into the animatronics and that they're possessed i guess you would be a little weird yeah I can see that. And Mike, uh, I don't. Again, it's a it's a video game adapted to a movie. You can only do so much. You know what I mean? Right. And like you said, you like you have to believe. Right. You just have to believe. Yep. In between shifts, Mike explains the disappearance of Garrett when he was a young child, which became a cold clay a case that he had been taking uh, sleeping pills every night in order to repeat his dreams and find who kidnapped his brother. After panicking from Abby's increasing relationship and the animatronics on the fourth night, Vanessa warns Mike to not bring her to the restaurant again. Mike gets Jane to babysit Abby. That's Aunt Jane, by the way. Much to her frustration as he goes back to the restaurant during the day and overdoses on his sleeping pills. And that's the end of the movie. He overdosed. And <laughs> he, di- is that- he died. Oh, it makes it sound like it does. Yeah, yeah. It pans out. He's just he's laying on the floor of Freddie Fosbear's Pizza. The animatronics are standing around him, and he has throw up around him, and his eyes are wide open, and the credits roll. <laughs> and that was it. So, so, and 
in this scene too, the um, Abby, the younger sister, she doesn't get her way once, or she realizes that Mike is trying to offload her to Aunt Jane, and she's like, "I hate you, Mike." Yeah. And she goes and like scribbles on all of her portraits of him. Yeah. And her her friends, you know. So he's like, "I'm just getting a little Aunt, tantrum. I'm just getting Aunt Jane to watch you for a night." I hate you. Right. Right. But I mean, like, so Aunt Jane is more, it, it seems a little bit more unstable than even the animatronics, though. Jane is such a weird character. She, she's the second worst other yeah. than Vanessa, yeah. the cop, for me. Inside the dream, the five children appear again and tell Mike that he can stay with Garrett forever in exchange for Abby. And then at Mike's house, Jane is murdered by a. Gl- okay. So, so, uh, so let's talk about this exchange or this, this kind of deal that they made. It's a bargain. Yeah, this bargain. So when I guess when he overdoses on pills, he's having this very lucid dream where the kids come up and he and he's asking, he's like, "Do you know where Garrett is?" And he's been asking them this many times. And uh, the kid says, "You can be with Garrett forever, and if right. you, all you have to do, but what are you going to give us?" And he says, "I'll give you. I'll give you anything. What What do you want?" And they're like, "We want Abby." Mm-hmm. And then he goes. And he touches Garrett's face, which it's fake. It's just a dream. And I'm guessing he's offering him, he's offered to kill him, right? And be in a dreamlike state forever? Yeah, he's saying, um, you know, he sees at first that his normal dream is not playing out like it usually does. So he turns around, he's like, hey, this isn't what happened. This isn't how my dream works. And then they're like, well, you could have your dream like this forever if you give us Abby. Um, and so then he says, yes, and he's crying, you know, he's emotional, yeah. but, and then he turns towards his brother, touches the hair and realizes that like, and I think it flashes over to Abby. And so he's like, well, I don't want to lose her too. Yeah. So then he reneges on his commitment and then but they're gone. They start slashing him. Yeah. And like, it's too late at that point. Yeah. They're like, no, they want, yeah, they're, they want Abby and then they're also going to kill him and allow him to yeah. you know, die as well. Yeah. It's not and like they can keep him in a dream state forever, but that's essentially the exchange is Abby goes with them to play forever. He can die and be with his brother. And I think the uh, it's also noted to say that his parents are dead too. Yeah. The mom, yeah, died, the, the mom died from something terminal, and then it, it kind of alludes to the fact that his dad killed himself. Or the dad went out to get milk or something. <laughs> and never came back. It was just too much for him, is what, is what he said. But uh, it, it, in the beginning, it seems like they were the perfect family. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. They're camping. They're all until that Coke spilled on the picnic table. That and ruined like, everything. <laughs> that's how you ruin your families. People don't spill a Coke don't on a picnic table. Put the lid on. Put the lid on, man. <laughs> um, Golden Freddy shows up at Abby's house. While Aunt Jan, Aunt Jane is watching her, right? And so he's like standing in the corner. You see, like, right. it's like a different, you're like, this isn't your normal Freddy Fosbury. He's got one ear yeah. is kind of gone, right? I looked over at Jessica and I was like, that's Golden Freddy. <laughs> Golden <laughs> Freddy. He used to have, like, in the game, he had like a little song that played or something when he would show right. up. Well, is Golden Freddy, it was kind of confusing there. It looked like, no, it was Golden Freddy. It wasn't. This um, this says Go- yeah this says Golden Freddy but I remember yeah. Golden Freddy being a little bit prettier. This one seemed yeah. like, this this one seemed like he he been through the ringer a little bit but yeah, right. maybe they're just trying I'm to make just... him a little bit creepier. Right, Mike and, is it? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Golden Freddy getting in the taxi too, where it like just tilts the whole taxi. It's your comic relief moment where comic the relief taxi moment. driver looks in the mirror and yeah. sees Golden Freddy's eyes and all that. Yeah, and we we laugh, but then but then Caleb, my teenager, was also like, "So what? Cab driver would not just run at that point, right. <laughs> or call the cops? Where's your mom, little girl? Like, oh, where he, do you want to go?" He did look in the rearview <laughs> mirror, and she was pleasantly very happy. She was just like, "Yeah, that's true." So she was like that. So she was not in distress. So Golden Freddy uh, murders Aunt Jane. We don't see it. It's off camera. Nope. And then you uh, see her laying there. After. Yeah, you see her laying. And then she's like, oh, Aunt Jane is sleeping or something like that. <laughs> I would have liked to see Aunt Jane, though, get bitten in half or yeah. something. Or maybe as whatever. they're leaving, it like pans back to her face and her face is gone. Yeah. 
you do get to see some body parts in the warehouse. Yeah. L- later on towards the end, uh, Mike is like, uh, he, he's running for his life and he like, he's in a storage room with some of the, the parts and some of yeah. the headpieces and some stuff. Some of the older animatronic yeah, parts. And, and, and the babysitter and, and her friends, their mutilated bodies are in there. Right. Which, which I thought was for PG 13 was, it was pretty graphic. Some of that, yeah. some of those bodies. It's kind of like your, uh, you know that there's other dead people in here, kind of like your Halloween, where people fall out of the closet yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Yeah. A variant of Freddy Foz. Okay, so Mike is attacked several times inside of his dream. We, we just talked about that. He wakes up strapped to a torture device that attempts to tear off his face, but he escapes the machine and flees the restaurant. But he's critically injured until Vanessa arrives to help him. Um, it doesn't really talk about how Vanessa gets him. I mean, it would, so he just wakes up and Vanessa has him in a way. It's it was kind of weird. I don't know. It, right? She's like, "We're at a something kind of outpost, and I've passed you up." Yeah. And then she goes into explaining everything. Um, and then they drive back to the pizzeria, and my wife's like, "Where? <laughs> how did they get to this other location? Like, what's going on?" I would be curious to see if this movie had a bunch of reshoots. And edits because it was it, it uh, some places it was like a jumbled mess and you're like what but yeah. but what what's just going on so yeah it was kind of yeah yeah it had so, the right direction in the beginning I thought but then towards the end it kind of fell apart yeah uh, Mike details his dream uh, uh, to Vanessa Vanessa reveals that she is the daughter of the serial killer that murdered his brother and the other five children William Afton and that the animatronics and souls of the children are under his control. She also tells them that they will likely attempt to murder Abby, much to Mike's dismay. What if she told him right there that he's actually the, uh, the, 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 the career counselor that hired you, and we can go to the office and shoot him in the head right now if you want to? Then it would just be over too quick, and you wouldn't get any closure <laughs> with Mike and his brother. That is true. Because it turns out that you know uh, the counselor there, uh, who turns out to be William Afton, which in the lore is one of the owners, um, you know, of, or one of the creators of Freddy's Fazbear's pizza. Yeah. Um, you know, he kidnapped Garrett. Yeah. And, uh, killed him. So, yeah. And, and in the dream, you do see like the, the spring trap or the, it's, it's like a bunny, a yellow bunny rabbit drawing in the dirt where one of the kids drew that. Yeah. He drives to the restaurant with the necessary equipment to disable the animatronics and save Abby, who is taken into a back room by Chica. Chica tries to kill Abby by stuffing her inside of an animatronic suit with spring locks, though Mike disables most of the animatronics and saves Abby. However, he is attacked by Chica's cupcake and separated from Abby, who is attacked by Foxy, but is saved by Vanessa. (laughs) That was written really Back weird. And uh, yeah, so anyway, we're in the we're in the throes of animatronic battle right here. The cupcake is like latching onto Mike's leg and just biting, even though like I think the cupcake can it ate the security guard's face right. in the beginning. So I'm I'm sure it's so just his his leg is mutilated and it has to be amputated at this point. Because the cupcake yeah, was, the cupcake was chewing on it for ten minutes. He gets up and limps around and I don't know if you hit on it, but it turns out that electricity would kill the animatronics. So by this point, he's dumped water on stage, tased it, which knocked out Chica and Bonnie. Or it, was that them too? No, it knocked out Freddie and Bonnie. Yeah. Because they were on stage singing. Yeah. And then then he met Chica in the hallway, hit her with a stun gun yep. or a taser or something. Right. So, yeah. Uh, so he finally gets his cattle prod and yeah. his cupcake. They're, they're taken out pretty so, easily. Yeah. You just need a little electricity, just, which makes sense. I mean, that's, you know. Yeah, I guess that's a cool way of taking them out. And it's it's cool that the police force has just a whole briefcase full of different stun guns, um, you know, that he could just pick which one he likes. Yeah. Uh, so that was interesting. Vanessa just gives Mike weapons. She gives her squad yeah. car at one point. She says, here's the keys. Take my car. And, like. <laughs> so uh, weird. Vanessa needs to be taken off the force ASAP. Right. Misuse of authority. Um, both uh, so <laughs> the Chica's cupcake separates from Abby, who is attacked by Foxy, but saved by Vanessa. We said that confusing jumbled mess. Both animatronics are defeated, but as the group try to leave the restaurant, 
William revealed to have been posing as Steve Raglan and having murdered Garrett appears wearing the now decaying spring bonnie suit or spring trap bonnie suit knocks Mike unconscious and enables the animatronics back to life. And I guess he doesn't just kill him straight away. He wants to put him in a suit. Yeah. So that he can be under his control. Yeah. That's what it seems like. Yeah. And uh and I remember like that was part of the lore. Like it's not yeah. just they don't just kill you. They they put you in suits. Right. Yeah, cuz in the game uh when William Afton is kidnapping the kids, he's known as the Purple Man um in the games. So okay. that's where he kidnapped Garrett. He was the Purple Man um at that point. Yeah. Um how did I, you I really hope that's right because if it's not, I'm going to hear about it. Oh, <laughs> What well, what did you think about uh uh Steve Raglan or or, uh, or William at the end and 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 uh, that character as a, as a, as far as a bad guy goes Matthew Lillard. You know you could kind of tell that his character was a bad guy cuz he was like you're going to hate the job um the pay sucks and the hours are worse but he's really trying to drive this poor broke guy uh to get a job there and I don't know if it's because he knows that guy is Garrett's brother kidnapped his younger brother when he was little things like that I don't know if that's explained or maybe the children told him about Abby oh that's true yeah you know because the the children Vanessa explains it yeah she's like yeah it was my dad so so before we get to this ending apparently the children the the spirit children that are living inside these animatronics thinks that uh William is just a great guy and mm-hmm. and all they have are these great memories of being at Freddy Fosbe- uh, Fosbear's Pizza and hanging out with uh, Springtrap Bonnie and his Bonnie suit. And that's the pictures that you have on the wall. They have no memory of the carnage or the evil that happened to them. Right. All they have are the good memories. So they think William's a great guy. So they would help him. They would do anything. They would do his bidding for him because he's he's a good guy. Yeah. Right. He's kidnap kids. Yeah. And- He's and, a good guy. And all their good memories of all the children, it's on the wall and drawings. Right. And, and you hit on that at first, and I didn't even gather that when the movie first started. You know, I saw the images and the, the crayon pictures, and you know, I didn't even pick up on it that that was used here in this later scene. Yeah, it's a huge plot point. Knowing that they need to understand the truth, Abby begins drawing a picture of William murdering the children while Vanessa distracts and shoots him. <laughs> But is afterwards stabbed. She gets stabbed really good. And so this the dad stabs uh, his daughter. His yeah, daughter. It's, yeah, he's uh he's something else, isn't he? He's not very nice, apparently. And the knife oh. uh, the knife was like this long, wasn't it? It was yeah. like and he goes really long. Um, but it was cool though because later, uh, and you you're probably gonna touch on it here later, but you know after Mike prevails and they're leaving they just kind of like wake her up from her stab wound they're like hey we're, we're leaving hey, get let's out. go come on, come on let's get out of here no i think oh, he's just he, he, he kinda, just got a little limp he kind of throws her over no. his shoulder and kind of drags her out the place is like falling is it falling apart she's limping tony she is limping <laughs> like abby's on one side mike's on the other her arms around both of them and she's just kind of Doing she, a limp strut. She had her bulletproof vest on, and the knife could only go in so much. It's a stun gun knife. Something like that. A taser knife. I don't know. That was weird, though. Abby shows her drawing to the animatronics, causing them to turn on William. Surrounded by the pizzeria's main mascots, part of his suit gets bitten off by the cupcake animatronic, triggering the spring lock machinery inside of it, crushing his body as he's dragged into the back room of the restaurant by Foxy. Mm-hmm. Mike and Abby carry a wounded Vanessa <laughs> out of the uh, restaurant. Though she falls in, she falls into a coma afterwards. She's taken to a hospital. They don't really, I mean, yeah, she's there. She's there in the ho- afterwards. Right. <laughs> Mike continues. Uh, hey, wake up. He just got stabbed. It's her, just, <laughs> come on, shake it off. That's funny. Mike continues Sorry. to look after Abby as they return back to just a normal life. In a mid-credits scene, uh, Golden Freddy watches as the dying 
William bleeds out in the corner, closing the door on him soon after. In a post credit scene, Balloon Boy is shown appearing inside a taxi driver's car. Balloon Boy is kind of like a uh, jump scare, um, funny thing throughout the movie. Right. And I, I think he appears in the second game. You have to switch a camera and wind up a clock so Balloon Boy stays where he's supposed to or something. Yeah. So yeah. That's, God, I hope that's right, too. I'm going to get tore yeah, up in yeah. the comments if it's not. Um, but, yeah, what would you think about the mid- and post credit scene there? Um, I, 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 went, I got up to use the restroom, and I missed it, so I had to, I had to rewind it. And uh, it was okay. It was, right. It was okay. It was kind of like, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, uh, William Afton, he was kind of like, I come back. I will always come back or something right. like that. So um, kind of alluding to a, a sequel, if one is made of this movie. Yeah, I, I think that, that would be okay. I would, you know, I'd watch it again or I'd watch the, a sequel, um, you know, and, and that's in the game, too, where William Afton's character is in the spring Bonnie costume and then he gets crushed. Yeah. So that is the game. I forget which one. Um, so I thought that was a cool th- callback to the games. Um, but yeah, I-, I would watch a second one. I mean, it it might be at a different location because this one's tore up. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So so if I feel like I feel like if you're a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, that you are absolutely going to love this film. Mm-hmm. I think uh, they, w- what I was reading is Scott Cawthon was on set. He produced it, so he was every scene. It was him, you know, and and, okay. and yeah. So like, uh, if you love the video game and you love the lore of it, I think I think you are going to have a great time watching this movie. I think you're going to buy it. I think you're going to enjoy it for a long time. Um, like all we were saying is, if you don't know what's going on or you've never seen it, I think there's going to be a portion of uh, the public that's not going to enjoy this at all. Right. Or yeah, not get it. And if they do watch it, they're going to just pick up on the, the slow star, the confusing family thing. And kind of like I hung up on, but, yeah. but yeah. Uh, and yeah, it is good. The few scenes that just show all the animatronics working together. That is, uh, that's definitely for the fans. And, uh, the concept is a genius. I love the concept of it. And I, I love I love a good horror movie. There's not many movies I can watch with the boys. They are getting right. so they're getting they're getting messed up more and more messed up. They're getting more and more bloody and gory, and so it was kind of, I guess, refreshing to be able to watch a, a PG thirteen film yeah. with the with the kids and this close to Halloween. So it was it was cool. Yeah, I liked it too. I liked it's it all too. Right. <laughs>